welcome the entire forces of Soweto, Grand Forces and the community of Soweto. Thank you very much for your presence. I'd like to welcome the entire Provincial Command team members who are present here, specifically our five um, commissars who are our employees from the Central Command team to Haudeng. We say thank you for your presence. I'd like to welcome the Provincial Secretary, the officials of the Provincial Command team of Haudeng and all Provincial Command team members. Welcome all regional leadership, the regional chairpersons and secretaries of the five regions of Haudeng. You are all welcome and welcome all other branches that may be here joining us in Soweto today. Particularly, I'd like to welcome all stakeholders that may be visiting us from other organizations within Zimbabwe as well as here in South Africa. And if there are any representatives from the ZANU PF, you are all welcome, warmly welcome to our esteemed memorial service of the EFF led by the Commander-in-Chief and also welcome members of the media and welcome any other members and any other stakeholders that I may not have specifically individually recognized. You are all welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks, National Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Matita Mofasi! Matita Mofasi! Matita Mofasi! Matita Mofasi! Thank you very much. Uh, now we are going to call on uh, some of our uh, esteemed visitors who came to grace this occasion. Uh, all the way from Zimbabwe. Uh, the first person that I'm going to call is a, a person who will be representing the family. Uh, his name is uh, Patrick Zuwao, and he's a former Minister of Indigenization in Zimbabwe. He has been uh, persecuted, and uh, he will explain his relationship but uh, he is the nephew of our late hero, uh, Comrade R.G. Mugabe. Comrade Patrick. Mugabe. 
Mugabe realized that Corporate Malema and his team would, would leave Zimbabwe before he came back from the AOAU, he cut short his visit because he needed to be able to speak with his people. We were at State House with President Malema, with President Mugabe and Commander in Chief Malema and his team. They were supposed to go to the airport. President Mugabe said, no, they cannot catch that flight. Organize another flight for them later on. When Comrade Malema and his delegation came back to South Africa, they were hunted and chased out of the ANC. Because they came to see President Mugabe. And they resonated with what President Mugabe talked about when President Mugabe said that the next struggle will be the economic liberation of Africa in our lifetime. So, as a nephew of President Mugabe, I will accept President Mugabe's membership of the EFS. He spoke with Comrade Kasukwere and he tasked Comrade Kasukwere and some of us to start organizing presidential youth interfaces during which President Mugabe would explain to the people of Zimbabwe that him and his generation were in the sunset of their lives and that the next liberation would be waged by young people. And because President Mugabe stood for young people, some of his colleagues who he fought for, who he fought with, would not be able to recognize that young people are the future of Africa, that young people will liberate Africa economically. They chose to take arms against President Mugabe because President Mugabe was committed to pass the torch on to young people so that young people can liberate Africa economically. When President Mugabe was deposed, some of the comrades that are now wanting to stand and pontificate over his funeral refused to acknowledge him. They tormented him. They made him suffer. And the family decided that we could not continue to allow him to watch the news every day in Harare. It's the likes of Opamu Chiguri, Mebo Chinomona, Matema Nanda, called President Mugabe a traitor. Why do they want to pontificate over him? You did not want him in Zambia. He is wanted here in the DNA. <laughs> President Mugabe went to Singapore and he was staying in a rented house in Singapore. He was not in hospital. However, five days before passed on on, Saturday, on Sunday, his condition deteriorated. When his condition deteriorated, he was taken to hospital. President Mugabe was in hospital for five days before he passed on. President Mugabe effectively was tormented by Zanu PF. He was tormented by the regime of Emerson Munakaba. President Mugabe said, and I quote, Zimbabwe is where I was born. Zimbabwe is where I will die. And Zimbabwe is where he will be buried. That's what he said. But President Mugabe did not die in Zimbabwe because of Emerson Munangaka. When President Mugabe spoke with 
members of the family, members of his immediate family, his wife, his children. He gave them specific instructions on what must happen at his funeral and on the his burial. I spoke this morning with Amai Mugabe. She instructed me to issue a statement, to disseminate a statement that she and the immediate family had put together. The statement is that they are being coerced by Emerson Munangagwa to ignore President Mugabe's wishes on where he, his mortal remains should be interred. I call upon you, Commander in Chief, I call upon you to help the family recognize, have, have the wishes of President Mugabe be recognized. President Mugabe, it demands of us that we make sure that President Mugabe is able to rest in peace. President Mugabe is able to rest in power. It is not possible that Emerson Monangagwa and his henchmen can pontificate over President Mugabe. I thank you.
My dear brother has just spoken to us, Honorable Patrick Joao. I'm also accompanied by the team. There is Comrade Shadid Mashayamombe, who was a member of parliament. We have with us Comrade Mashange, Honorable Mashange, who was a member of parliament. And indeed, we have our sister who blessed this occasion. Thank you very much, my dear sister. Indeed, today is not an easy day for many of us. But let me take this opportunity to thank, first and foremost, Comrade Julius Malema and this important family of the EFF. When I recharged a few days ago with Comrade Malema, he said to me, Comrade Tyson, we are having the memorial service of the late President Ara Jim Gabi. I was in Singapore. And he said, you must be here. We are here where it matters most. This kind of gathering is happening in Soweto, where the people genuinely loved President Arachim Khan. There is no such gathering center. There is no such gathering in the affluent center of South Africa and anywhere else in Africa. Because what is truthful? resonates with us who are here today, resonates with the EFF, resonates with the revolutionaries who want a different Africa, the young men and women in our country, in our region, in Africa, who want a new future for themselves. They want to be part and parcel of the economy. The challenge we have, Comrade Malema, is what I call political assimilation. When the political leaders are chosen from amongst us, the moment they come into contact with the WMCs, they forget about the poor people. They have a different story. It's all about what kind of projection, how am I viewed by Western imperial capital? If you talk to anybody who gets into power, the moment they start buying cufflinks, nice bow ties, nice suits, good cheap perfumes, they forget about the people of EFF who are here in Soweto. You ask yourself, you ask yourself, when you are chosen to be president, Mugabe, President Mugabe, was chosen by the poor people in our country to be president. Hence, what he stood for made those of the riches angry with him. The moment you see yourself becoming acceptable to Western capital, just stand back and say, Hey, comrade, where am I selling out now? What is the problem? What have I done? We choose leaders, African leaders, to lead us. The moment he gets into the office, he starts thinking about, oh, well, if I, how will I be viewed in London? What is the uh, capitals of cash in uh, New York saying? Washington. But the people who chose you are in Soweto, they are not in Washington. Let's first of all answer to the aspiration of the people in Soweto, not in Washington. I hope Comrade Malema, the lessons, that we've gone through in our country. And I thank you for remembering this gallant son of Africa. He belonged. He was the son of the soil. He was not scared. When it came to taking our land, this Madara was not scared. Bob was not scared. Bob was not scared. Bob was not scared. He said, Rivians, why we went to war was the land. And he simply said, Take the land. And he was a very stubborn old man. He would be moving around. Say, but are you not scared? The whites are angry. Says, Angry about what? Here I was born. Here I shall die. 
and here on the bed. Let the men come back to the master. about uh, how the, the terms uh, to which we'll get the land uh, will be, we'll be having discussions and meetings about uh, when the, 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 the Not this man. Yes, it has brought tremendous suffering to our country. But comrades, never you sacrifice principle on the altar of expediency. foundation that is laid for us is laid for Africa. Where we call upon leadership with my comrade Malay, let's build the economic independence of our people from what these old men have done. Those old men who were not scared to go in prison for 11 years he was there. He lost his child while in prison, never gave up. He was harassed, he left the country, went to live in Mozambique, he never gave up. He let Zanu, Zanla forces from Mozambique, he never gave up. He was insulted. He had degrees taken away from him, which had been given by the British. He said, for as long as I'm doing the right thing for my people, I will not turn back. I will give my people land, it doesn't matter. They need to say, Comrade Malema, leadership does not require cowards. I know it from A 
came to set. I was there with this young comrade. This man is a strong man.
I'm going to call our Deputy President Floyd Diego Shimambo.
that will make us to hate Mugabe. Because to hate him is to hate ourselves. So in the name of steel people, in the name of black consciousness, we call up the black child to free your mind from the hand of ENCA, BBC, CNN, Fox News, white monopoly old publications who are trying to make you hate your own liberators and worship your oppressors. We have therefore gathered to remember Mugabe on our own terms, to remember against Mugiti, to speak truth, to dominate Eurocentric sponsored narrative against his admirable, brave, and very strong legacy. We are here to pick up the beta, to renew and to revive our vows that as long as we live, like Robert Mugabe, we shall never compromise the demand for a total liberation of Africa. We are here to identify with him in death as we identified with him in his living days. We are the descendants of Robert Mugabe, the children of Robert Mugabe, the successors of this stubborn old man, the man who fought against the period. In the name of President Mugabe, who died at a godly age of 95, we vow to continue the struggle in the same fearless manner he did. <laughs> Fighters, you are not in a memorial service, but in a history lecture, because when you celebrate the life of a 95-year-old revolutionary, it's a reflection of our history, where we come from, where are we and where are we going? We are gathered here in Orlando East of Soweto to say we are Robert Mugabe and he is all of us. Not just in Zimbabwe, but even here in Soweto, South Africa. We are here today to celebrate the life of the founding father of an independent Zimbabwe. The life of an anti-colonialist, anti-imperialist who refused to bend the knee when faced with the harsh consequences, we are here to salute the life of Kushunko. We are here to celebrate the legacy of President Robert Mugabe. Fellow fighters and Africans, we must know that the act of remembering President Mugabe is an act of defiance. So if you didn't know where you were going, you are going to a defiance campaign. We are here to fight them because they said we must never celebrate him. And like in a Mugabe style, we are defying him. We are here to celebrate him against their wishes. Nay, want to tell us not to celebrate President Mugabe, that we must speak badly of him even in his death. There are imperialists and racists today who want their heroes to be our heroes and their enemies to be our enemies. It is these people who celebrate murderers like declared by giving them Nobel Peace Prizes. It is these people who name our streets, our schools after races like Fervut and Malak. It is these races who own our land and control our economy, who want to dictate to us who we must celebrate. Today they are here inspired by President Mugabe to tell them they can go to hell. We want to say to them, in the same style of President Mugabe, they can keep their declared, we will keep our Mugabe. We want to tell them, those who are patients, they can keep their ears we will keep our Mugabe. President Mugabe represents to us a hope that one can stand against the oppressor and live to tell the story of liberating his own people. The life of President Mugabe is an exciting life. The death that we owe Mugabe is one we will never be able to repay. As a young revolutionary in the continent, it, it is important, comrades, to know that President Mugabe was also young like all of us. Maybe 
tell us in the revolution had a problem with President Mugabe. President Mugabe was impatient. President Mugabe wanted change and he wanted change directly. President Mugabe was amongst the giants. And therefore, it would be incorrect to say you want to celebrate Nelson Mandela, but you can't celebrate President Mugabe. Because this President Mugabe went to school with Omar Tam, went to school with Nelson Mandela, went to school with Robert Sobukwe, went to school with Julius Nyerere. And therefore, it is this generation that represent a generation of fearless leaders who fought for our liberation. Now, if you are a young thinker, you will go around saying Subukwe is a hero, Tambwe is a hero, but Mugabe is not. Mugabe is a hero like all of those who belong to his generation. Mugabe loved education. Mugabe made education fashionable. It is Robert Mugabe who was well qualified. I mention this to you because we want to appeal amongst ourselves here as young people that we should make education fashionable. We should not only emulate Mugabe when it comes to defiance, but when it comes to discipline and education, we want to emulate the chief people of DA. We shouldn't do that. We must follow the teachings of Robert Mugabe to the end. Mugabe was a soldier too. It doesn't mean when you are a soldier, you can learn. It doesn't mean when you are a grand force, you can't go to school. You have to go to school, come back, do your work on the ground. Mugabe, Mugabe went to school here in the Eastern Cape at the University of Forte. He was shaped here. He studied his politics here and we are very proud as South Africans to claim Mugabe as one of our own. His appetite to learn, his violence, his militancy, he got it from South African politics. In Mozambique, Samora Machel knows Robert Mugabe the radical because we shaped him as South Africa. Therefore, you can't say now that you don't know him because the whites say you shouldn't know him. If Mugabe is a fake reformed, South Africa, you must take a collective responsibility because you are the ones who taught him politics. The Soviet Union knows Mugabe. China knows Mugabe. USA knows Mugabe. Mugabe is known all over the world and all over the continent because South Africa taught him politics. And therefore, you must not see him as someone that comes far from us. You must see him 